welcome to the last part of Building, Growing and Investing in the UK. In this final chapter, we look at reasons to invest in UK companies and we look at the future growth and development of financial services. Ed Thurman, who is Head of Financial Institutions for Lloyds Bank, says there are numerous investment opportunities in UK financial services. I mean, I think they're, they're, they're many and varied, and that's in many ways the exciting part about this. And I think, you know, when, when we look at this space, you know, we think very carefully around, um, you know, how we help facilitate inbound and outbound investment. Again, that's part of our sort of, if you like, core mission around helping Britain prosper. Equally, how we support some of the smaller businesses, the more innovative business models. Um, you know, we believe there is, you know, absolutely, you know, a positive case for having a varied financial services sector with lots of different actors in. And, you know, we're, we're keen to support that. OK, but we've seen a lot of investment go into uh, real estate and infrastructure. Yeah. Um, I mean, is that a healthy sector for the investment to be going into? I mean, frankly, I think it's a reflection of, you know, global macroeconomic flows of wealth flows. And, um, you know, again, if, if this is a way for us to continue to ensure that we're seeing key sectors of the economy grow uh, in an appropriate way, then, you know, we want to be there, we want to be facilitating that. And again, it comes back down to, you know, a lot about our heritage, about London as an international financial centre, and again, trying to facilitate these inbound and outbound flows and getting a mobilising capital into the real economy. Um, and that's really what, a lot of what we're seeing right now. And, you know, our job is to, is to help make that work um, and to help facilitate those sorts of flows. OK. Now, we've talked a lot about the positives of mm. the UK's destination, but what about the, the challenges? And I'm thinking here about things like high costs and, yeah. and the regulation that's come along in the wake of the crisis. Yeah. And I think those are definitely factors that, you know, have to be taken into account. Well, again, whether you're considering investment or building businesses and growing businesses in financial services in the UK. Um, but the reality is this is a big marketplace. Uh, the reality is it's a varied marketplace. There's multiple client needs that need to be served and being served in different ways. And the infrastructure we have around, you know, the different skill sets we've got, um, you know, helps that innovation. So it's a very fertile place to be investing in, to be experimenting and trying with new things. And ultimately, the trade is, you know, does that trump what we see in terms of regulation and cost? And the answer so far has been yes. The challenge for financial regulators everywhere is to strike a balance between under and over regulation. So how does the UK measure up? I mean, th there's no doubt that the regulatory framework is more substantial. Um, and, you know, it feels like we are calibrating in the, in the right direction. There's no doubt about it. And I think when you look back on the crisis, there was clearly a case for the industry to answer. So the response is an appropriate one. And again, it's a question of how that gets calibrated to, you know, what the next sort of five or ten years will look like. And that's really, really important. And, you know, the two-way communication between the industry, the policy makers, you know, that's an important aspect of, of what we're trying to do as well. OK, now we've talked a lot about the positives, you know, I mean, the strong skill set and the, and the history of, of, of the UK as a financial centre. I mean, is there any danger that we get a little bit too complacent? I, well, I mean, that's always going to be the case. And I think, um, you know, if, if you ask me one of the things that I do worry about, it is around that. And, you know, the fact that we've always been good at this doesn't necessarily buy you the right to always be good at it in the next 10 or 20 or 30 years or 100 years. Um, but again, you've got to back ourselves to say, well, you know, we've come through these kind of phases before. You know, the industry has always adapted and developed, and I mean that in a positive way, but, you know, really anchored around, you know, what our clients need um, and develop the right propositions. And, and frankly, the critical mass that we have here feels like, you know, that is something that will continue. But these days, I mean, we must be competing against not just European capitals, but against New York and against new Asian cities. I mean, Hong Kong, obviously, but probably Shanghai, too. Yeah, and I think that's, that, that is a fact of life. And again, it's sort of, you know, it's about making the UK, London, other financial centres in the UK accessible um, and providing the right skill sets and support um, to industries and, and entities that are looking to invest and to participate in these marketplaces. And the reality is there is a network, there is a global financial network and um, London has a history of, of being a node in that network and, and, and will continue to do so as well. Okay, from everything we've heard in the Viewpoint series, I mean, can we have a final assessment about what we think is, is the future of the UK as a financial services centre? I mean, to my mind, you know, it's a very positive outlook. And I think, you know, whether you look in banking, whether you look in insurance, um, whether you look around the challenger banks, whether you look at some of these you know, alternative business models, alternative models for providing finance into the real economy, there is lots of things that are being tried out there. Uh, and to me, that's the exciting part about it. And, you know, frankly, we all want to play our part.